What is Pixie? Pixie stands for Proof Key for Code Exchange. I have talked about Pixie several times. Now it's time to explore what is Pixie and how Pixie works. We can secure back channel requests with one exception. We cannot keep the secret in the native app as they are still a public client and are considering secure applications, right? So we agree on that, that it's not really recommended to have secret, especially that important secrets in a Flutter application. In other words, the authorization code grant type is perfect choice for native apps Although we must address keeping the secret issues. Luckily, there is a standard for that, and that is Pixie. Pixie stands for, as I said, proof key for a code exchange, which allows us to link the authorization request to the token request using a proof key that only the initial requester would have known. All right, that might sound a little bit difficult to understand. It's time to see how it works. Before the application starts the authorization process, it first generates a random value called code verifier. Then the client initializes authorization request and includes the SHA-256 hash value of the code verifier known as code challenge. The process goes and authorization server store the code challenge. Then the rest of authentication and authorization continues. Then you will redirect to login, authorization prompt, you get authentication and authenticating and contest. All good, all good. And then you get authorization code back as we explained already. As soon as all is done, then you need to ask or request for access token. So in this case, the token request include code verifier. Then the authorization server hash this value the same way as what the client has done with SHA-256. Then compare it with the code challenge received in the initial request and it was stored already. If the hash matches, voila, the server knows that the client is the same and has not tampered along the way. It will send the access token back to the client. This is how Pixie works. Let's take a look at that. Now we know how Pixie works. Let's take a look at the full grant flow type together with Pixie. It starts with a user interaction. You tap or do something on the mobile application. Then it generates a code verifier and then you send this together with to the authorization. The server, though, store the code challenge. And then it redirects to the authentication prompt. Then you see authentication and contest menu. And the user will accept or approve that. Once they do that, then the auth code will be generated. The auth code together with code verifier will be posed to OAuth token endpoint to be exchanged by access token. Then the server will validate the code verifier that is sent and is stored as a code challenge on the server. Once that is validated, then the access token and ID token will be back. Then you can request any API with this access token. And if server validate your access token, the authorization server, then you can receive a response. Although this seems like a simple process, it gives us such a high security assurance between client native apps and authorization server. Now that you are pretty familiar with OAuth, there is still one missing piece of the puzzle, authentication. We talked about this several times, but we never get into that. It's time to talk about OpenID Connect. There is no specification in OAuth to standardize authentication. Therefore, the OpenID Connect, an extension of OAuth, makes it possible to implement a standard authentication and formalize some OAuth ambiguity. All right, I will actually call OpenID Connect OIDC. By using OICD, the authorization server can act as an identity provider. It provides the discovery document 
a well-known endpoint that describes OpenID provider, including the URLs of its various endpoints, what scopes and claims types support it, and the public keys for verifying tokens. This document helps to allow clients to configure to use the identity provider automatically. An example of this document is, well, the URL that you are seeing right now on the screen. OpenID Connects has a user info endpoints to obtain user information by passing a token, which proper scopes have been delegated, such as, well, profile. A critical part of an OICD is identity token, which describes the authentication itself instead of permitting us to access a protected resource. The client application uses the identity token to verify the data, whether or not the identity token has been tampered. An identity token, an ID token, is always a JSON web token or JWT. JWT. The ID token has three parts. First, header, which is something like that, and it stops with dot, a body, payload, again, something like that, with a dot, and a signature, something like that. So a JSON or a JOT token has two dots, three parts. Now let's take a look at the header that describes the token itself. In the JOT format, for example, in the header, you have a few properties in the JSON format, usually in the form of shorthanded letters. For example, algorithm, in this case, it will, it will be ALG or type would be TYP to make this, you know, JSON web token a little bit smaller. We're going to have body, which is going to be similar to the header with some shorthanded properties such as expiry, the OAuth time, so the issuer, ID, nonce, hash, uh, and IDP, as well as uh, expiry date. The body also will come with different parts. It comes with some properties or shorthanded properties in a JSON format. You have expiry date, you have issuer, ID, nonce, and IDP, etc., and so on. For example, SOP in this case would be a unique ID for the user, and IDP is the identity provider who issued the ID. Now you know the JSON web token. Well, it's time to see how you can debug this JOT token. Well, it's very simple. If you open up JWT.io, you can simply paste your JOT and you will see all information related to this token. All right, now you know all the theory behind OpenID Connect and OAuth 2.0, and you learn all the flows and you learn Pixies and you know how it will impact your application. You know what do you need? It's time to get to some coding in the next chapters and implement something very cool. I'll see you in the next chapter. <laughs>